What, what was the process for uh, figuring out how to work Rashid Shahid up to 30 snaps? Like what, what did he have to do to earn those snaps, or what did you guys have to figure out? Like, uh, I think it's – I think – I think you um, used a good word there that as, as uh, the more and more we gave him, the more and more he earned our trust and we could we saw that that he could do it and that um, there wasn't too much volume for him and then he's gone out and uh, when he's had opportunities, he's produced. It, it's, it's additional routes or it's additional receiver positions or it's being able to block or like what, what is it that he had to add? I, well, I think it was just more of us, us putting personnel groupings in where he was on the field and so um, our ability to say, hey, Let's let's get him more involved. Let's get him going, and uh, us, like I said, just putting him in more uh, more or um, all more plays. That, that uh, it was the third down catch you had last week. You ran the, the look inside out. Correct. Yep. Um, like was that was that something that that he was doing I don't know, five weeks ago, six weeks ago when he was first in here? Is that something that you guys have kind of like added some sophistication? To that yeah, I think that. Um, you know, sometimes we've had that route in other game plans where it's been some different guys running it. But um, again, you know, it's it was in training camp. It's through the process of um, you know different guys running it throughout that, and and uh, it's a route that fits him uh, well. There's a couple other guys that we feel that route as well. But uh, again, he's a guy that we specifically designed that play to try to get the ball to, and it worked out. We got the coverage we wanted, and uh, he executed. It seems like it's just that the physical traits are. Right. There's uh, obviously he again. He's uh, he's he's proven to us and he's shown to us that he can uh, continue to build what he does. Um, and again, that presented the situation where we felt like that was the coverage we were going to get. Um, and sometimes, you know, maybe you're in a different situation, you might not get that coverage. So it depends. There may be specific times when you feel like you can get to that concept, where other times you might not be able to. Obviously, the call last week was really dumb, but what's the coaching point for Chris Olave when he goes to the ground and kind of hold on to the ball? Like, you lost one similar to Tampa Bay, I think. So, like, yeah. what, do you, what do you guys kind of well, The emphasis is just, you know, when you finish with the ball, and, uh, you know, we, we can get up here. We Too many times I've gotten up here and talked about us turning the ball over as well. And uh, so, the, you know, the added emphasis of, hey, not only is it ball security, but we're finishing each play with the ball in our hands. And... Uh, you know, Cody's obviously worked worked the drills in of uh, you know finishing with the catch as they're going down and uh, things like that. So again, the emphasis of finish finish every play with the ball. And with some of the fumbles last week with Allen, especially the second one, is that just maybe trying to do a little too much, try to make something happen in a moment? Uh, yeah, I I think um, you know just give credit to the San Francisco defense. They uh, you know they got it out, but again, it's it's uh, it's you know it's not okay, and we just gotta uh, continue to emphasize that. Uh, you know, those are the things that are going to get us beat if we continue to turn the ball over. I mean, is there anything that that's like concerning, or are you just circumstances of fast lane? Is there like a big picture? Well, I think there's. Play? I think it. You know, sometimes you can look at it and say, "Hey, you know, we got to we got to coach it better." And then there's sometimes where they just, you know, they're just random. We uh, you know, the helmet got it, and uh, but we always are emphasizing ball security. Um, and again, Dennis every week gives that clear message, and, and he'll show examples of how. How the other teams are getting it out, and uh, you know, and I do think Joel does a great job with those guys, coaching them, working the individual drills, and 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 talking through ball security. What what do you guys have to combat with, with getting Chris Olave uh, more involved in the red zone? Is he just seeing a lot of sort of quote unquote number one receiver treatment in there, or is it? Yeah, I think as you look at um, some of the things we were doing in the red zone, there's obviously he's part maybe of the progression if it's this coverage. And if it's the other coverage, then maybe it goes to the other side. So I think a lot of that can do with what coverage you're seeing. Um, but it's not like we get in the red zone and say, hey, let's not have him as one of our primary guys. And, and uh, I think that just sometimes those opportunities don't present themselves maybe based on what coverage you have, but maybe it's a, a good look to get the ball to the running back or to somebody else. So. Is there anything, though, that he needs to do in his development that that's a particular area of the game that, that requires – well, I think the emphasis is when you're in the red zone, a lot of those catches are going to be contested for everybody, and uh, things happen quicker down there. And so, uh, you know, I think we had a couple opportunities last year or, or last week where we just we didn't finish to play. And so I think that, again, that's uh, for all those guys. But, again, it's not like uh, uh, 
there's anything. I mean, he does a great job, and we're very confident if we're throwing the ball to him down in the red zone. Pete, there was a lot of talk on the broadcast about the four passes from the four-yard line. What, what was just kind of the, the thought process for you guys and just throwing every, every time on those stats? And obviously, some of the plays work is. Yeah, in, in hindsight, you know, you, you can, we didn't score, so that's, you know, on me. But uh, I think that we felt like we had some, some good, uh, good plays designs to get the ball in the end zone. It didn't work out that way. Um, and, uh, you know, after you, you look back and you say, oh, yeah, there's a couple calls that I'd like to have back. What were your thoughts on uh, Penning's debut? Uh, again, he didn't get many reps. Um, you know, he, he got in, thrown into it early for his reps. He got thrown into a tough, tough situation. We were backed up. But again, he continues to, uh, to evolve, you know, evolve, and it was just his first time back. So I think we got to, uh, you know, continue to develop and, and get him more reps as the, as we go along here. Like when you get a guy who hasn't played in a couple months, who obviously is like going to be somebody you're depending on in the future. Like, like how do you kind of weigh that? Like, uh, yeah, it's a tough time to be thrown in, but you kind of need him out there, right? Yeah, obviously when he's on, we feel like he he brings value. Uh, when we're able to get him out on the field. Um, he was as another example of maybe he was involved in a lot more plays that we had going in the game plan that just didn't get called uh, for whatever reason. So he's a guy that we have a lot of confidence in and we're excited about him as we can get him more opportunities.